Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to wrap up the case for the Adafruit Joy Bonnet in Raspberry Pi Zero. In part one, we designed the Adafruit Joy Bonnet. In part two, we created the buttons and we made the top half of the case. This is part three. We're gonna finish by making the lower half of the case, which will secure onto the Raspberry Pi Zero. So the first thing I wanna do is actually make sure that my case component is activated, because if I make any uh, things here, uh, things will get a little bit different. So make sure that the case is activated by clicking on this little button here, activate component. You'll notice that it's activated because our timeline only shows the features that pertain to that component and everything else is ghosted out, which is nice. If you don't see that, there are some options to turn that on in the timeline, hide all inactive features and component color switch, which I tend to have turned on. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do after that is click on the bottom of a Raspberry Pi. I want to work off of this surface because if I ever need to change it, if the Raspberry Pi is too far or too close uh, to the Joy Bonnet, then I can just update this offset plane and not have to worry about updating sketches. So over here under construct is offset plane. I have that selected. Now I can drop this down. This is gonna let me create an offset or some distance away from the actual PCB. I think I need, a, for now I'm gonna put two. I think that's gonna be okay. If not, super easy to change it. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now I have my construction plane, it's called plane four. So I need to create a sketch from this construction plane. So I'll click on it as it's highlighted. I'll click on the create sketch button. And you'll notice that Fusion flipped me over into the top. And that's gonna be a little bit difficult because I actually need to work from the, from the bottom here. So the way I know how to fix that is I'm gonna go ahead and delete this here. And I'm going to turn on the, 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 the plane again look down from the bottom, have that selected, and then click on Create Sketch. Fusion moved me a little bit, but I am now looking at it in the right orientation. So that's kind of a nice little kind of tip thing. So the next thing I need to do is to, now that I'm in this sketch, I can project some stuff up. So I am going to project in this edge here. So I'm gonna work kind of off of this guy here. So I'm gonna, with that selected, I'll hit P on my keyboard or this button over here under Sketch project and you'll see that I got some purple lines that is now referenced from this actual shape. So if we ever need to update the case or anything, this will all get updated with me. So cool, I'll hit stop sketch. Now I'm gonna select these two profile profiles and I'm gonna extrude them. Now I can extrude them inward or outward, but I'm gonna extrude them kind of outward so that I have uh, a, 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 a right distance away from this to the from this surface to the bottom of the PCB. And I'm gonna make them the same thickness that I've always been making them, which is 1.5 millimeters. You can change that if you need to, and I'll hit okay. So I got that. So I got kind of my base thing, my base bottom for the bottom half. The next thing is I need to make those walls to kind of enclose it. I'll bring back that sketch. Let's go ahead and name it. I'm gonna call this bottom case. And what I'll do is I'll just select this outer edge here, this loop here thing. I'm gonna uh, select uh, E on my keyboard for extrude. And instead of uh, adding an actual distance or making this like that, I am going to change the extent to object and then select this guy here, right? Now, Fusion's gonna automatically join that to the top case, so I'm gonna hide the top case, leave it at join because I need to join this kind of wall to the base, and I'll hit okay. I don't have to worry about chain faces. This is all good, so I'll hit okay. So now I got my sort of bottom half of the case. If I hide the, the Joy Bonnet, I can see where the Raspberry Pi is. Let me hide the buttons as well. So there we go. Next things I'm gonna do is work on the standoffs. Just like we did for the top half, I need to have a standoff for every every kind of mounting hole here. And you'll see that they're not exactly uh, centered. It's not exactly symmetrical. But we're, we're gonna try to make it symmetrical in the sense that we can kind of use the mirror command and so I don't have to make so many of them. So I'm gonna hide the Raspberry Pi Zero for a second. I'm gonna click on this surface here, which is the kind of the inner part of the of the, of the the case. And I click P on my keyboard, so now that's projected. I am working from the top of it. And I'll hit okay. Now the next thing I need to do is project those four mounting holes from the Raspberry Pi into this sketch here. So I'm gonna bring back the Raspberry Pi Zero. And what I'll do is I'll hit P on my keyboard to kind of initiate the, uh, the projection stuff. And I'm gonna click on this top edge here of the mounting hole. 
I'm going to avoid clicking on this one because I think that creates two lines, two circles. I just need one. So I'm going to click on this one and then kind of repeat that for all four. So every corner has one. I'll bring this in here, pan and click. All right, now I'm going to hit OK. We're done projecting and I'm going to hide the pi zero. The next thing I'm going to do is I actually don't want to use this hole's diameter. I want to use this hole's position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new circle in here and make this a little bit smaller uh, than 2.54, I believe it is. I'm going to make it 2.2. This gives me a little bit of, uh, it's a little bit tighter, so it'll bite into uh, those screws that I'm using, which are M25 screws. I'm going to hit OK. So I got that. Now I can hit X on my keyboard to kind of uh, emit that from being selectable as a profile. Now the next thing I'm going to do is make a some, some sort of material that will um, kind of hold this hole here to make a standoff. Instead of using a circle, I'm going to use lines to create somewhat of a rectangle. So I'm going to click on my edge, my line tool, and I'm going to start from this area here. It doesn't matter yet because we're going to sketch dimension it, but as long as I'm on this edge, I'll create, I'll automatically create a collinear uh, constraint. So it'll always be locked to this. So I'll click on that, bring this out a little bit, and then bring this in here, making sure that I have a 90 degree straight angle. So I'll hit OK. So now that I have that, you can see I got some constraints that automatically got generated. I have this one here, which is the per perpendicular constraint. And then I have this one, which is a collinear constraint. So if I start moving this around, you can see kind of what those constraints are doing. They're kind of locking it in place. I really can't move this away from that because it's got a collinear and same thing here. So these both have those two constraints. Now I can actually apply some dimensions. So I'm going to say this edge needs to be a certain distance from the center of our circle. I'm going to go ahead and say 2. I think 2 is fine. And then I'll do the same for this other one. 2. That looks good. Cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is instead of doing that for every single one, I'm going to try to do it a little bit smarter where I use a, um, a mirror. So I'm going to hit L on my keyboard to create a construction line. So as I hover over this edge, I'm going to find the triangle right here, which is kind of the center, or is the absolute center of this edge. So click on that, bring it down, and then do the same thing here. That's where that is. Let's repeat that process, but for this edge over here to make a sort of a horizontal version of that. So now I got these two. I can select them by holding down Shift. I select both of them. I'll hit X on my keyboard, the little button here normal slash construction. We're going to make those construction lines. So now they're, they're not kind of cutting into this. I have this as a reference point. So I can use this to do a mirror. So let's bring that up. I'll hit S and then type in mirror, enter to accept that. Now I'm going to click on, double click on this one. That'll select both of them for me. And then I'll select my mirror line as this guy over here, which is the, uh, the vertical one. Now you can see the previews over here. It's black. I'll hit OK. Turns blue, and now whenever I update stuff over here, um, it updates over here. And one thing I forgot to do is actually select our circle. So let me undo that. I don't know how to add to a, a mirror. I just know that I kind of have to do it again. So mirror, click on these, double click, and then click on this one. Select my mirror, uh, my mirror line is that one there, and hit OK. So now I got that. I'll go ahead and, and make this uh, an X here, like that. And it looks like, actually, it's not perfect. It actually looks off a little bit. And that's a little bit weird. So I'm going to have to kind of, um, <laughs> wow, I, can't, I guess I can't do a mirror because it's not exactly in the center of the case. So let's go ahead and, and remove that line. We try to make it, good thing we zoomed it because once you zoom in all the way, you can really see that it's off by a tiny bit. So there goes that idea of mirroring. You can't really mirror it. So I'm going to create a circle here, 2.2, hit enter. And I wish I could I could just mirror that, but we're going to have to kind of do the same stuff. So again, click on these edges here to kind of make that. And we'll do some distances, make it 2. Over here is going to be 2 as well. OK, so we got that. Now we need to do the bottom. We Unfortunately, we can't do a mirror, because if we do a mirror, it's not exactly the same here. There's actually a little bit more distance here. And that's because the joy bonnet is a little bit, the headers, when they join, they aren't exactly the same. The boards don't line up exactly the same because they're offset just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these lines, these, these center lines. It was a good idea, but we, it just doesn't work for this design or this specific case. So that's kind of a shame, but hey. That's that's a good thing we're we're doing here. So again, two point two. Now, if you 
if you find that your tonches are off when you're actually printing this out or you're milling it, you can just uh, adjust this if you need to. Maybe it makes sense to make a, a user parameter for them all so that you can change them uh, easily without having to go into the sketch, but here I am. All right, let's make this one kind of like that. Again, using uh, our just two, using our sketch dimensions to define this guy. Okay, that's good. And then we'll do this last one here. Sometimes with with, with specific designs, you you can't make them symmetrical, which is unfortunate. But hey, you got to do what's right for the design. All right, so we got our four. That's basically all we need to do in this sketch. I can hit stop sketch and then select those profiles, right? And we're making sure that we're selecting. Um, you know, we don't have to. We don't have to because we made those construction lines. These these initial projections of the mounting holes. We don't have to worry about selecting kind of the stuff on the inside. So I'm gonna hit E on my keyboard to extrude that out. And I need to get to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna bring back the Raspberry Pi Zero. And now I'm gonna. I could actually use a section analysis. So I can do that, so I can actually click on this, but I probably can't really. Maybe right there I can select it. Let's change the extent to object and see if I can click on that bottom. There we go. There I have an error here, so I need to turn the uh, the chain faces to extend faces so they actually extend out. So now I have that. If I hide the pi zero and turn off section analysis, we can see all four of them. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit OK. It's make sure the operation sets join because we're actually joining it to the bottom of the case. So now I got that. I got my four standoffs. Uh, it's about two millimeters tall, which is probably a little bit too small. I'm gonna go ahead and add some fillets here. You don't have to do this fillet thing, but I like to add them, just kind of round them off. So I'll select all these four. Just these corners I think need a little bit of roundness. So I hit OK. All right. So now one thing I want to show you is that. If we find that these aren't these standoffs aren't tall enough, let's say I want to extend this bottom out. Instead of actually adding another sketch or or making an offset, I can just double click on this very first plane that we did to create all this. this is the first thing we did, remember? I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna put 2.5. I'll hit enter and everything gets updated. So that means this is now 2.5 this tallness, the height of the whole thing, has automatically updated to 11, and this edge here has stayed where it needs to stay with the other half of the case because it's derived from there. It's, it, we have a, when we extruded it, we told no matter how, no matter where, no matter where we go, make sure to, to kind of stay locked into this, this bottom here by using it as an extent uh, to object. So there we go, now we got that. Let me hide the top case. And the next things we need to do, let me bring back the Raspberry Pi, is to make our cutouts for uh, all these ports. We have the SD card on this side, mini, mic, uh, mini HDMI over here, USB, USB for power, and then our camera connector. Now we don't have to expose them, but I'm going to expose them just so that we can get uh, access to just about everything we need to. Um, so one thing to know, if we're 3D printing this, we can totally make a hole where there's a kind of an overhang, but since I plan to mill this out, I can't have that undercut or those bridges or those overhangs, whatever you want to call them. So I'm gonna need to make a full cutout starting from the from the top here downward. So let's go ahead and select this face. We're gonna do the SD card first. I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard to get that into its own sketch on the, the work plane of this area. Now I'm gonna hit okay, and I will hide that bottom half and then project in this guy here, which is the SD card holder thing. I'll hit OK. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a rectangle that starts from the top here. Once I want it to start from here because I kind of want that default collinear constraint so that it'll always kind of be locked there. So I'm gonna click on that, drag this out to eh, maybe something like that. Now I can start dimensioning this out. So the edges, um, I want a little bit of clearance here. So I'm gonna put 0.2 millimeters and then do the same for the left side and probably for the bottom, so 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, here like that. And then I will grab one of these lines and turn that into a construction line so that I can select this whole profile. I'll hit E on my keyboard to just to initiate the extrusion. I'll bring back the bottom case, and then I'll say change distance to object, and then select this inner wall here. 
That way we get a cutout and you'll see that the operation is automatically set to cut, which is what we want. I'll hit okay. And now we have our little cutout here. Now, again, it's if you're using a 3D printer, you can totally have a bridge that goes from here to here, but I am milling it out and I can't do that. If I wanted to flip the thing over on the spoil bed, I, I run into alignment issues and my, my Z won't even go that high. So it's just one of the things that you have to kind of look for when you're uh, manufacturing this uh, with the CNC subtract, uh, subtractive. So let's do the same stuff, for the, but for this side over here. So again, select, your, select the, the wall that you want, P, I'm a keyboard, <laughs> it sounds terrible. Hit okay, hide the, the body here and then project in that reference uh, connector for the, for the, I think it's for the camera. Yeah, it's probably for the camera. Hit okay. Again, rectangle starting from the top here. We're gonna get that collinear constraint and kind of start down here. I'm gonna use the same uh, clearance thing. Point two, a little bit of a play, point two. And then the left side, point two as well. Then grab one of these edges, doesn't matter which one, and then hit X to create that, um, that construction line. Now hit E again, bring back the case, make the, chain, make a, the extent to object, click on the inside here, hit okay. Now I got those two. So that's working, that's looking pretty good. All that's left to do is to make some cutouts for this. So again, select our face, project it into its own sketch, hit okay. Now I can hide the bottom and then bring in these uh, these ports. So I got the mini HDMI, I got the USB for peripherals, and then the USB for power. So I got those, I hit okay. Now we could make holes for each one of these, but I think I found it better if we just have a giant cutout for these two because they're kind of close to each other. And micro USB cables tend to have really thick connector pieces. So I probably I also want a little not a little bit more clearance than just point two. So I'm gonna make a full mil fill a full millimeter of clearance, and I found that works pretty well. I don't, I didn't run into any issues when I actually made this. Again for the H the mini HDMI, we'll do that. So on these edges here, one on the left, one as well, and then on the bottom one as well. Cool. And again, if we if we were to extrude these out, you'd have to worry about um, you'd have to worry about selecting double. But I'm gonna go ahead and make some construction lines for these top edges here, so I can just select one and then two. So with those selected, I can hit E on my keyboard, bring back the bottom half, hide the Raspberry Pi for a second, change the extent to object, and select the inner wall here, and that automatically turns to a cut. Hit OK, and now we have our cuts. Let's bring back, let's let's change up some things. So I'm gonna call this bottom case. I'm gonna start naming some stuff. So I'm gonna call this uh, port cuts. This one's called uh, camera cut. This one's gonna be SD card cut. And this one's going to be bottom standoffs. I noticed, oh no, that's good. So now everything makes sense to us from uh, kind of the sketch standpoint. If I bring back the top case, Looking good there, bring back the buttons, bring back the Raspberry Pi, the joy bonnet, and then let's go ahead and activate this whole component. If I can, sometimes, there we go, activate component. So everything gets back and you can see we're pretty much done. This is looking really good. Now, if we were to print this out and things didn't line up, maybe our headers are a little bit taller than we wanted to, super easy to update this. Again, if we wanted to make this taller, I can change this to something like that. It says the object's not visible. It's okay, it's just hiding. So I'll hit okay, and you can see that the case updates our sketch. So because we have sketch dimensions, everything gets updated. I'm gonna undo that. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I like it. And if our joy bonnet were to kind of move, uh, the same things. So let's try to move our joy bonnet. Let's say the joy bonnet moved up because we had like bigger headers or something. I hit okay. Finish capture position, and everything gets updated. The buttons are updated. Um, the even even our cutouts got updated because we were using a collinear constraint and everything's derived from those uh, kind of um, uh, extent to object things that we did when we were extruding. So that's really awesome. Let's undo that. And there we go. So this is awesome. We can 3D print this out now to try it out. I think in the next tutorial, which will be part four, we're going to learn how to uh, create 
cam operations to actually CNC mill this out. If we were to 3D print this, you just throw it into a slicer, slice it, and you're pretty much good. But for CNC milling, you have to really be uh, specific about which tool you're gonna use. Uh, can my tool get into these uh, specific geometries? Uh, how to optimize for machining time, lots of different things. So look forward to that one next week. So this is good for prototyping now as a, as from a 3D printing standpoint. So there you guys have it. Let me know what you guys think of this tutorial. And if you liked the video and found it useful, please let me know in the comments below and go ahead and give it a thumbs up and all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.